Question 1. Working principle of rotary kiln under high temperature. Answer. The rotary kiln in the application area, the numbers to be most cement industry. The whole process of cement production line summarized as two ground a burn, with a burning, is made by grinding good raw material, in the high temperature of kiln under the action of the process of burning become clinker. The equipment is also widely used in metallurgical, chemical, building, refractory material, environmental protection, and other industries. The rotary kiln under high temperature overloaded alternating slow operation, and its annex equipment maintenance and thermal rail system related to the level of control of the rotary kiln working safety and efficiency. Therefore, rotary kiln cement produces the host, commonly known as the cement factory, part. Rotary kiln cement industry forged in the main equipment burn the cement clinker. The stand or fall of sealing device directly affects the thermal rail system and run the rotary kiln capital. Strengthen rotary kiln daily maintenance data analysis of the pack be helpful for equipment management work. Cement kiln is used for making of cement clinker and there are dry and wet methods to make cement. Metallurgy chemical kiln is used in metallurgy industry and iron works for lean iron ore, chromium ore and ferronickel or calcimine. Rotary kiln is used for calcimine of high aluminum bandal ochre in refractory material industry, for calcimine of CA lot and aluminum hydroxide in aluminum manufacturer, for claiming of chrome sand ore and chrome powder ore in chemical plant. Lime kiln is used for baking active lime and dolomite in the steel factory and ferroloy factory. Rotary kiln is the main equipment for calcining cement clinker and it can be used widely for cement industry, metallurgy industry, chemical industry, etc. Which can be divided into cement kiln, metallurgy chemical kiln and lime kiln according to different materials. Question 2. What is the difference between fuse and circuit breaker? Answer. Fuse. A fuse has a wire that melts with the heat of a short circuit or high current and interrupts the circuit. Once melted, you have to replace it. Circuit breaker. A circuit breaker interrupts the current without melting, a pair of metal sheets with different thermal expansion coefficient, for example, and can be reset. Question 3. What services do you provide? Answer. We provide the following. Residential electrical work, central heating, cooling and air filtration. Convenient, secure online self-scheduling for all your electrical needs. Extended hours of operation, 7 a.m. 7 p.m. Discounted member rates on labor and services. A home electrical safety survey of all electrical systems for members. Question 4. What is the electrician? Answer. The electrician is a home electrical service created by the Electrician Service Co. Inc. serving homeowners in Nassau and Suffolk counties. Question 5. What does 14 minus 2 mean? Answer. This is used to describe the size and quantity of conductors in a cable. The first number specifies the gauge. The second the number of current carrying conductors in the wire, but remember there's usually an extra ground wire. 14 minus 2, means 14 gauge, 2 insulated current carrying wires plus bare ground. Question 6. Breakers. CA not I use fuses. Answer. Statistics show that fuse panels have a significantly higher risk of causing a fire than breaker panels. This is usually due to the fuse being loosely screwed in, or the contacts corroding and heating up over time, or the wrong size fuse being installed, or the proverbial, replace the fuse with a penny trick. Since breakers are more permanently installed, and have better connection mechanisms, the risk of fire is considerably less. Fuses are prone to explode under extremely high overload. When a fuse explodes, the metallic vapor cloud becomes a conducting path. Result. 
from complete meltdown of the electrical panel, melted service wiring, through fires in the electrical distribution transformer and having your house burn down. Breakers won't do this. Question 7. What does a fuse or breaker do? What are the differences? Answer. Fuses and circuit breakers are designed to interrupt the power to a circuit when the current flow exceeds safe levels. For example, if your toaster shorts out, a fuse or breaker should trip protecting the wiring in the walls from melting. As such, fuses and breakers are primarily intended to protect the wiring, all our CSA approval supposedly indicates that the equipment itself won't cause a fire. Fuses contain a narrow strip of metal which is designed to melt safely when the current exceeds the rated value, thereby interrupting the power to the circuit. Fuses trip relatively fast, which can sometimes be a problem with motors which have large startup current surges. For motor circuits, you can use a time delay fuse, one brand is Fusetron, which will avoid tripping on momentary overloads. A Fusetron looks like a spring-loaded fuse. A fuse can only trip once, then it must be replaced. Question 8. What is a circuit? Answer. Inside the panel, connections are made to the incoming wires. These connections are then used to supply power to selected portions of the home. There are three different combinations. One hot, one neutral, and ground, 110 volt circuit. Two hots, no neutral, and ground, 220 volt circuit. Two hots, neutral, and ground, 220 volt circuit plus neutral, and or two 110 volt circuits with a common neutral. Question 9. My house does not meet some of these rules and regulations. Do I have to upgrade? Answer. In general, there is no requirement to upgrade older dwellings, though there are some exceptions, i.e., smoke detectors in some cases. However, any new work must be done according to the latest electrical code. Also, if you do backquote backquote major work, you may be required to upgrade certain existing portions or all of your system. Check with your local electrical inspector. Question 10. What is CSA approval? Answer. Every electrical device or component must be certified by the Canadian Standards Association or recognized equivalent before it can be sold in Canada. Implicit in this is that all wiring must be done with CSA-approved materials. They perform testing similar to the L, a bit more stringent, except that CSA, or recognized equivalent, approval is required by law. Again, like the L, if a fire was caused by non-CSA approved equipment, your insurance company may not have to pay the claim. Note, strictly speaking, there usually is a legal way around the lack of a CSA sticker. In some cases, e.g., Ontario, a local hydro inspection prior to purchase, or prior to use, is acceptable. The hydro inspector will affix a hydro sticker to the unit, which is as good as CSA approval. But it costs money, last I knew, $75 per unit inspected. Question 11. What is a listing? Answer. The L stands for Underwriters Laboratory. It used to be an insurance industry organization, but now it is independent and non-profit. It tests electrical components and equipment for potential hazards. When something is ill listed, that means that the ill has tested the device, and it meets their requirements for safety, i.e., fire or shock hazard. It doesn't necessarily mean that the device actually does what it's supposed to, just that it probably won't kill you. The ill does not have power of law in the U.S., you are permitted to buy and install non ill listed devices. However, insurance policies sometimes have clauses in them that will limit their liability in case of a claim made in response to the failure of a non ill listed device. Furthermore, in many situations, the NEC will require that a wiring component used for a specific purpose is ill listed for that purpose. 
Indirectly, this means that certain parts of your wiring must be ill-listed before an inspector will approve it and or occupancy permits issued. Question 12. What is the NEC? Where can I get a copy? Answer. The NEC is a model electrical code devised and published by the National Fire Protection Association, an insurance industry group. It's revised every three years. The 1993 version has been released. You can buy a copy at a decent bookstore, or by calling them directly at 800-344-3555. The code exists in several versions. There's the full text, which is fairly incomprehensible. There's an abridged edition, which has only the sections likely to apply to most houses. And there's the NEC handbook, which contains the backquote backquote authorized commentary on the code, as well as the full text. That's the recommended version. Unfortunately, there's no handbook for the abridged edition. And the full handbook is expensive, $65 plus shipping and handling. Question 13. Does the electrician need a copy of my plans? Answer. If you are building a new property it is helpful for the electrician to see the plans. Also discuss your personal needs so that power outlets are conveniently placed. Question 14. Can't I do the work myself? Answer. It's okay to visit the hardware shop and buy the switch you like the look of. But you need a licensed electrician to complete the work. A licensed electrician will issue a certificate to show the work complies with building standards. That way your property won't be devalued or insurance issues crop up in the event of a problem. Question 15. When do I call an electrician? Answer. Whenever you have a job relating to power or wiring. Question 16. What about solar electricity? Answer. An electrical contractor can install solar panels to your property. Excess energy collected by your solar panels is fed into the electrical grid. You receive credit for power generated on your electricity bill. Question 17. I have got old wiring. Can any electrician handle that? Answer. Old wiring can be dangerous. Use a licensed electrician with experience in older homes or property. Question 18. How do I know if my electrical installation is safe? Answer. Only a qualified electrical contractor is licensed to properly test your installation for safety and issue a compliance certificate. Question 19. What is a safety switch? Answer. A safety switch is a device fitted to the property supply that cuts out electricity almost instantly in the event of a significant power leak or surge. Question 20. What can I do to protect myself from electrical accidents or injuries? Answer. Have an electrical contractor install a safety switch or circuit breaker. Nearly all electrical accidents involving consumer products could have been prevented by one of these devices.